Howdy there, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome, or should I say, welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play adventure. And I do say welcome back because, even though this is episode 1, if you missed it, I did an episode 0, where we created the new world, wandered around until we found this lovely hill, built a double layer fence for some reason, and I also did a little bit of mining, and if you're interested in watching that, I'll have it linked down below. If not, episode 1 is as good a place as any to start. Because this is where we're actually going to start doing some modded stuff. And I guess if you're going to start here, I should go ahead and introduce what this pack is and how you can get it. First off, this is Tech It 2. We are in the first version because that's the only version that's currently available. It was created by XJohn for Minecraft 1.12.2. But it is an official mod pack, as you can see here, from the Technic News section of the Technic Pack website. This is an official pack created by the Technic team in conjunction with John, our ex-John, who also, in case you were curious, made the official Hexit 2 uh, uh, in partnership with Technic, so as official as it can be. Uh, like I said, this is Minecraft version 1.12, and it is meant to be a successor, a sequel to the original Tekkit Classic that launched in 2012. So if you're interested in getting it, you can download it either using the launcher, the Technic launcher, which is available for... Uh, well, just about anything, Windows, Mac, Linux, I myself am using PolyMC because that's what I use to manage all of my mod packs from pretty much everywhere. It's it's my one-stop shop. I love it. I will be making a full tutorial for it in the near future. But like I said, Episode 0, we did a lot of mining in preparation for this moment. This moment being when we finally get to do some modded things. So at the end of the last episode, we set up sort of a roadmap of things to build, and it's not quite in the correct order, but it's kind of close. One of the first things we want to build is, well, actually we want to build a generator and a macerator, but I thought it could be fun to start with the iron furnace and the stone macerator. I've never built a stone macerator before. I have never used one. I didn't even know that it existed. But uh, today we're going to be building one and we're all going to be trying it for the first time. So this will require a single piece of iron and a single piece of redstone. Which means that you could technically build this as soon as you find four pieces of iron. Because you will need three for a pickaxe to get the redstone. And then one for the actual piston. And then from that point forward, you'd be able to grind up every additional piece of iron you find into two iron dust. Giving you two iron ingots. So... Really early game, you can immediately start doubling all of your ores, and I wish that I'd realized that sooner. I'm almost positive that I have everything that I need to build this. There's a ton of stuff in my inventory that I neglected to tidy up for this episode, which I'd actually uh, planned on doing. Interestingly enough, though, flint might not be one of those objects. It's very possible that flint is directly in front of my face, and I'm just not seeing it, as that does happen from time to time. But it looks like we're going to be starting off this episode by going into the mines to find flint. Now, fortunately, I have a feeling that's going to take me five seconds, and I'm not going to make you watch it. I'm just going to cut to it. Do I have torches? It doesn't appear like I have torches. Again, they could be right in front of my face, and I'm just not seeing them. But 24 torches, and into the mine we go. And I guess since this is episode one, mayhaps you skipped episode zero, this is where our mine is. It's very conveniently located. And uh, this little natural cubby was already here. Let's just go find some gravel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no! What? What a horrible thing to see as soon as we get down here. What a tragedy. Oh. Oh dear. Okay. I did not realize that that was going to start flooding this place. That's unfortunate. There's a lot of gravel up here. That's perfect. We'll go ahead and cap that off. And now we should have the, the freedom to just start digging all this stuff up. Okay, we have seven pieces of flint now, so more than enough. I think we can head back upstairs, and hopefully we can all ignore this blunder. I mean, surely starting the episode off with not enough flint is not enough to completely throw off the rest of the series, right? Okay, well, we're back. We've just slept, so we've got a brand new sunrise on the horizon, and we have seven pieces of flint, so we are more than ready for this little operation. First things first, let's go ahead and build this. So... We're going to hop into our crafting table, and we are going to build 
the necessary furnace. And then we're also going to need to grab some planks. Let me see if I can do a piston from memory. I think I have a vague recollection. I've done this one a few times. There we go. Got our piston. And then I think from there, it, we just combine that with cobblestone and the flint and the furnace. And that will give us our stone macerator. Plop that down. And then my understanding is that we just take any uh, material that can be macerated. So let's say iron ore. We plop that in there. Now, we could use coal. And assuming it works like a forest, a, sing uh, a, a, a furnace, I should say? <laughs> a single coal should cook up eight iron. But what if I only want to do a single iron? Well, fortunately, in that situation, we can make fragmented carbon. And then a single fragmented carbon will cook up a single iron ore. So it's just a good way of making sure you don't end up wasting your iron when you only have a few items that you need to process. So we're going to get all of our ores out of here. I think probably the easiest way to automate something like this early game would be to use hoppers. But that could be expensive and quite honestly probably not worth it. Oh my goodness, it's slow. It's very slow. Did it run out of coal? One coal was not enough. Or one, I guess, one car fragmented carbon. So it's going to take, in order to macerate one of these up, I'm assuming four. So does that mean... And I guess, I mean, there's one way to test this. We can put a... Yeah, I guess that's going to give us two iron dust. If we put one, two, three, four of those in there, this should cook up two of them. Unless I'm very wrong. So this is slow. And we'll see. It might not scale correctly with the fragmented carbon for whatever reason. It might not actually get to eight. Let's actually put eight in there and we'll see how close it gets. Because again, a single coal in a furnace should cook up eight iron ore. But I got a feeling we're not going to get that far here. Well, while that ticks away, we can go ahead and take it off of here and look at the iron furnace, which we can make with eight iron ingots. Now the iron furnace is better than a regular furnace in that it is 20% faster and is 25% more fuel efficient. So for a single piece of coal, you will get 10 items cooked up, if my math is correct on that. Wow, yeah, that processed two of those. So it's not just weird scaling with fragmented carbon, it's just not very fuel efficient. We need to get the electric one up and running as quickly as we can. Well, let's go ahead and we will throw three coal in there, I guess, because we're going to need more iron dust. That's going to be enough for six ingots, and we need eight if we are going to create an iron furnace, which we are, just for the fun of it. We can also use both of these items in crafting their upgraded better versions. So the macerator can either be made with the raw ingredients uh, with a machine block in the middle, or we can get a whole bunch of refined iron and put that around a stone macerator and electric electronic circuit uh, more or less the same amount of materials used but it's nice to have an upgrade path and actually now that i'm thinking about it it's it's actually more efficient to do it this way because if we look again at the macerator that's going to require seven refined iron versus building it this way requires a machine block which is eight refined iron so i mean i'm not saying it's a vastly superior method i'm just saying i don't know what i'm saying seven and eight. There we go. And now we have our iron furnace. Plop that sucker down and we can start cooking up things much more quickly. So we've got seven iron dust. Let's put it then in there with our coal. I mean, it is faster, but I don't know if it's remarkably faster. Nice that it's more fuel efficient though. So we can take iron furnace off of here now. And we can move on down the line. To create these two and to use them, we'll first need to build a generator. So that's going to be our first point of focus. The generator is going to need either an iron furnace, but we're going to be using our iron furnace and our electric furnace recipe. So we'll either need an uh, iron furnace or a regular furnace, a machine block, and a re-battery. So this is going to be another 8 iron, except they'll need to be refined, which is where you take your iron and you run it through again. So basically, once we're done cooking up all of our iron in here, I'll take eight iron ingots and cook them again. We'll also need a re-battery, which requires tin and copper, which we collected in the last episode. It also needs rubber. Now, I tracked down some rubber trees last time in episode zero, 
and we got a little bit of sticky resin out of them. We're going to need more sticky resin though as the series progresses, so we're going to make another treetop. I think mine is probably still intact somewhere, I don't remember where though. And we're going to go over to the trees that I collected. Did I not make a gate over here? I really should have made a gate. I know I made one back here. We need to build a proper house, but I'm waiting till we get the transmutation table. So, find yourself a rubberwood tree. Use your tap, right click, sticky resin. If you leave the tree up, eventually, the places where you can collect the resin will repopulate, which is handy. And if you break these, there's a very low chance you'll get a sapling. So you're going to want to go around and find as many of these as you can. Collect the resin from them first, and then chop them all down. Hopefully get a couple saplings to bring back to your base. And then never cut them down again. You can use, I think it's called an extractor or an extruder, to get more resin out of the logs themselves. Which is something we'll probably end up doing in the future. But for right now, sticky resin does have an EMC value. So once we get our transmutation table, we don't really need the trees anymore. Now while this is busy doing iron, I suppose we can go ahead and cook up our sticky resin over here. And look at that. We have nine fragmented carbon and ten sticky resin. It's a horrible, cruel trick of fate. The universe is laughing at us. But there we go. That'll start cooking up. And in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and split duties here and get this done a little bit more quickly. So now we can take our iron, split that down, get the eight of those cooking up, and we're probably going to need more refined iron now that I think about it. We'll need eight for the generator, but we'll actually need... Oh, jeez, it's already getting dark again. Okay, beautiful sunrise coming up over us. As I was saying, we're going to need the eight for the generator. The electronic furnace, though, requires an electric circuit, which also requires a refined iron ingot. And so does the macerator. So we'll actually put two more of those in there. There is our rubber. Awesome. This should be done now. So we can start running copper through it. We don't really need all that much. I think we'll go ahead and do two, three, four, five, six copper. And that ought to be plenty. And then we'll probably do the same with ten. There we go. There's our ten refined iron ingots. And we can start moving over the copper dust now. Something to keep in mind once we have our electric furnace generator and macerator is, at least in previous versions of this mod, so this is all from Industrial Craft 2 Classic, or just Industrial Craft Classic, once you place these objects, you will not be able to pick them up again unless you have a particular certain tool. And we'll look more into that in a minute. I'm assuming it's the same case now. I, I guess, I think, maybe. <laughs> I don't think that's changed. It's just something to be mindful of. Once you place these objects, I don't advise breaking them with a pick. You might lose them. Yeah, there it is. We get the wrench and the electric wrench. As well as a precision wrench. I've, never, I've not seen that one before. I don't know what advantage it has. So the copper's done. We're going to get the tin running now. We are starting to run out of coal. Things are getting a little bit dicey around here. The problem with looking up information on some of these mods is that they are so old. And there are so many different versions. And so many just minute changes between the different versions. So I found information about the wrench and the electric wrench. And it's basically exactly as I remember. This will take down your machines, but there's a small chance it'll gut them and leave you with nothing but a machine block. This is basically the same, but there is a lossless mode, and then I can find nothing about the precision wrench. I might have to look a little bit harder when we're all done here, but for right now, we've got our tin, we've got our copper, we've got a messy inventory, but somewhere around here we also have regular iron, refined iron, we do have redstone. I think we're ready to go. So we're going to start off here with the generator which is going to require us to build some insulated cables. So I think that the recipe for these is insulation to either side, and that'll give us six of these. But if I'm not mistaken, I thought at one point you could make just like one cable. Maybe I am mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong and crazy. Both of those things are possible. But that'll give us our copper cabling for the top, redstone down the middle, tin to either side, a battery. However, I think we're going to need one of these for each of these machines. Um, well, no, these don't require a battery. And these don't require a battery. 
they do require a whole lot more copper cable, and maybe we don't have enough rubber. That might be an issue. Oh, but we have 15 more sticky resin inside of this chest that I forgot about. For some reason, it just didn't occur to me. I, I just went out and collected resin and cooked that up and completely forgot about the resin we'd collected last episode. So that's going to save our bacon. Speaking of bacon saving, I'm going to cook up some oak wood into charcoal because we don't have any coal. And we're going to be in a pretty desperate situation here in a minute if we don't have some. Righto! So, furnace, rebattery, refined iron to make a machine block. Put those objects together and you have your generator. I think the generator we might be able to break without having a, a certain tool, but let's just not risk it. We're going to place it outside here and we're going to get rid of this segment of fencing because the inner fence was always a silly idea and I don't know why I did it. Well, to be fair, we started with the inner fence and then we built the bigger one around it and I kept the inner one just to be ridiculous. Uh, there was no justifiable reason to hang on to it. These two items, I'm pretty sure we can break consequence free. Let's find out. Stone macerator. Looked like we still have a stone macerator. Uh, iron furnace. That was the last of our pick, but we did get an iron furnace. So I think we're safe. So lots more rubber and lots more copper to get more copper cables. We can hit A over here to dismiss the generator. And if you're curious how to add a recipe over here, just find the object you want to craft, like let's say a wrench or an electric wrench, and just tap A on your keyboard while hovering over it. And that'll save it to quick access. And then from there, you can just click on it to view the recipe. I feel like I need to apologize for the state of my inventory during this video. It's... it's a disaster. And that's another day gone. Oh my goodness. Okay. Another sunrise. We're, we're burning through the daylight hours here, aren't we? Electric furnace. It's like a regular furnace, except it uses electricity, which is better for reasons. It is actually better. Instead of managing your coal and your little coal bits, all you got to do is throw all of your coal into this generator. It generates electricity, which will go automatically into this machine. Uh, as you can see, it's charged up, so we should start seeing a charge here now. And then it only uses what it needs, and the rest of it can sit peacefully until the end of time. It's very handy. Anything that you could cook up in a regular furnace, you can cook up inside of an electric furnace using electricity. You got some raw chicken? You can do that, and it's pretty quick. Got some coal? Throw that coal in there. Battery fills up? Guess what? That's fine. Electric macerator. Imagine being able to build one of those, but you can't because you actually miscounted how much refined iron you would need. Oops. That's okay, because guess what we do have? An electric furnace, which can make more. While that cooks up in the electric furnace, we can go ahead and get rid of that recipe, come back into here, and make another electric circuit, which we're going to need anyway. Something else we should probably discuss, and something I'm surprised I didn't think about sooner, is building the bat box. So the bat box is the most basic form of energy storage. In fact, we're going to go ahead and build one. Uh, it requires three re-batteries, as well as some wood planks and a copper cable. Now, if we use this, that does mean that we're going to need to use uh, copper cables to run power around, but that should be relatively simple. So it looks like the refined iron ingot is ready to go. We'll take that back over here to our crafting table and build the macerator. Now, much like the electric furnace, we can just plop it down right there, it auto automatically start charging up, and we can go ahead. I, I just, I liked the fragmented coal. Leave, leave me alone on the fragmented carbon situation. I'm a fan of it, we're gonna keep using it. Don't mind me, I just went and collected more wood to create more charcoal, because it's easier than going mining. Now that we have the electric macerator, we're gonna come back over here and get some more of our ores, let's say gold ore. Why not? That sounds like a good time. We're going to bring that over here, throw it in, and it doesn't actually look like it's all that much faster. It might be a hair bit faster, but it's definitely got to be more fuel efficient. I don't really know actually how much power this uses. All I know is that if this generator doesn't keep up with both of these machines, we're going to be in a pickle. And I think that it can. In fact, it can keep them both running and charge itself up. Let's make a battery. Get rid of the macerator, open up the bat box, 
realize that it requires more tin than we currently have, and get that gold out of there and replace it with tin. Gold is shiny and looks cool, that's basically the reason I did that. Let's make tin, it's more practical. What? You, what? Charcoal only gives you four fragmented carbon. I don't know how I didn't realize that. Oh, what a waste then. We'll just put whole charcoal in there. And that will be 12 tin ingots. Go ahead and keep that running in the background while we run over here to hopefully make the batteries now. There we go. And on top of that, we've got our copper cables. And that is three re-batteries. Combine those with planks, and I think literally any plank will do. That'll give us our bat box. And I want to put that underneath these machines. So where is my shovel? There it is. There's a bit of a trick with these. And that is that, at least in older versions, only one side would operate as an input, and all the other ones would be outputs. And I don't know if we're going to get lucky. Out the bat, we did get lucky. And immediately, one of the inputs is lined up to the bat box. But does that mean that all of them are inputs and only one is an output? I wonder if the front is the only output. Ugh. I guess now is the best time to point out that this is not necessarily a tutorial series. This is this is a let's play with tutorial elements. Basically, we're all playing and learning together. There will be times when I have to question things because I simply do not know. Please do not think less of me. I never claimed to be the oracle of all-knowing knowledge. I'm simply a man with Wikipedia access, same as you. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trimming the leaves off of the tree in an effort to hopefully find more places to get sap. And I think I've actually got plenty right now. We needed some more rubber. The leaves are not necessary. You can just leave the rubber wood stumps here and they will continue to produce more rubber. At least that's how it worked in older versions of Minecraft. And yeah, you can just go ahead and trim all of the leaves off if you wanted to. I did miss one up there. And I guess I'll never get it because I don't know what happened to it. Okay. All right, don't know how it got there. Let's sleep first. The other good part about breaking these leaves is that occasionally you will get a rubber wood sapling that you can plant and then eventually strip the leaves off of it and also just have a weird looking stump hanging around. <laughs> so I have a sneaking suspicion that the front of the bat box is where power comes from. And the way that I've decided to test this is by letting it get some power in it letting this run empty, and now if we place a cable right on the side of that, if that starts going, we'll know. So we're going to shift right click. Nope. So yeah, the front is definitely the output. That is unfortunate. So we'll get all of that running again, and then we need to probably look into getting rid of the bat box, building a wrench, because a wrench can be used not only to disassemble while hopefully not breaking things, it can also be used to rotate things, like the bat box, to get it facing in a direction you actually want it facing in. That's going to require bronze dust, which is a combination of copper dust and tin dust. Uh, this can be done in a macerator by macerating the already cooked ingots if you don't have access to the raw materials, which I might not. We do have tin dust here. That's good. I didn't cook it all up. I should note that there are upgrades that you can put in over here. For instance, there is the overclocker upgrades from industrial craft so we have the quantum overclocker upgrade that i've never heard of and looks really cool and then the regular overclocker upgrade which will make your machines faster you gotta have some coolant cells though which requires tin and a water cell which i mean or a bucket of water or probably even a bottle of water splash potion lingering water you know the basics those will make your machines i believe use more energy but will also make them quite a bit faster which could be handy. In fact, what am I saying? That would be immensely handy. I should have some of these. Add it to the list. Yeah, apparently, according to the wiki, each upgrade will reduce the operating time to 70% of the previous value and increase the energy consumption by 60%. So you can stack them and get a lot of overclocking, but also, gosh, how, how costful that would be. Costly, even, because that's makes more sense than cost full. All right, copper dust, tin dust, bronze dust. Get our rubber out of there. Fortunately, I think we have enough to be getting on with. 
And we're going to just put what's left of our charcoal in here. Because, gosh, we need it. With our bronze cooked up, let's cook up 12 10 dust. That'll be enough to create one of these overclocker upgrades. Let's also create that wrench I was talking about earlier, as well as more copper cables. Now, these are not the best for electricity. And in fact, if you pump too much electricity through them, uh, they might melt. But they will conduct energy. And we're going to try to connect these up, I guess, from behind now. So we're going to do one right click to rotate that. And then we're going to run the cabling like so. And now these machines can be powered either from the machine directly to the left or right of it, depending on whether or not we're talking macerator or electric furnace, or they can be run off of bat box power. Not super happy with how this turned out. It's a bit messy, but we can tidy it up later. We should see now that even when this runs dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take the charcoal out. The bat box should still keep it all powered. It's charging up quite a bit and I, we don't even really need to test this. I already know that it'll work. So we're going to need water to create an overclocker upgrade. And yeah, I've, I've decided to do that. And in order to collect the water, we're going to need some glass. Glass, of course, requires sand. So down here we go just in time for a server backup. That's always fun. I want to collect bits of sand that are not going to break the river and make it look like a disgusting nightmare if I can. And there goes our shovel, so I guess that'll have to be enough sand for right now. I'm also going to go ahead and, even though we don't need it, collect my sugar cane while I'm down here so that hopefully more will start growing. I say hopefully, but that is exactly how sugar cane works. So if it doesn't, I'll be confused and I'll have a lot of questions for someone. Sand in the electric furnace, that'll give us glass. And then, you know what we should probably also do is get an infinite water source up here. Probably should have done that a while ago, so we don't have to run all the way down to get water when we need it. So, I guess I'll make an iron shovel, as well as, and you know what, maybe a waste of iron, but we'll eventually need two buckets anyway, probably for other things. Might as well just go ahead and have them. So, one bucket of water in that corner, and then another bucket of water in that corner gives us our infinite water source. We have nine glass now. Man, I make glass vials so irregularly. I don't actually know. Oh, that's the recipe right there. And they're actually glass bottles, not vials. I knew that. I hate to admit it, but I don't even really know whether or not it said that glass bottles were appropriate for this. They're not. Apparently, we can make empty cells like this. But what goes into a cooling cell? Uh, just a bucket of water. Will we get our bucket back? What if I create an empty cell, and then we right-click that on some water? What happens after? I mean, that gives us 15 of the darn things. Interestingly, it looks like a water cell can be used. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Hold on. We're going to create 16 empty cells, and then we're going to get all of this tin out of our inventory. We have all of these bottles now that are useless, so that's, that's fantastic. But I think you just right-click to create water cells and then we can take these water cells back here and surround them with even more tin and that'll create coolant cells which do not stack that's fine Just throw that out on the ground oh we already have some in our inventory so we didn't have to do that uh the next step is going to be creating oof more copper cables oh oh look at that yeah so you can use one rubber and one uninsulated copper cable. I was trying to use rubber and a block of copper. That is where I went wrong. That makes sense. Well, we want just insulated copper cables from the offing. Electronic circuit, combine that with our 10K coolant cells and a couple more copper cables to get our overclocker upgrade. And let's see if that has a profound difference here. So let's watch that bar go across, and then we're going to drop this bad boy in. I wonder if it matters what slot we put it in. Surely not. Did it make a difference? Not noticeably. Hold on. Okay, let's do a count. You know what? That's what we'll do. When this one's done, we're going to count and see how long it takes. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six. Basically six. I've got it in there. Let's see about this next one. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, 
four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So it, I don't feel like it's going any faster. Maybe you have to create a lot. Wait a minute. No, hold on. It said it was going to go quite a bit faster. Each upgrade reduces the operating time to 70% of the previous value and increases energy consumption. I, f I feel like it isn't. But maybe if we put it in something like the macerator, we'll, maybe it'll be more noticeable. Say we take our silver ore and we put it in there. And we're watching that thing tick by. Look how slow that is. That is so slow. Surely if we put this in here, it'll be notably faster. Gosh, I feel like it got slower for a second. Huh. And also, we're running out of power. I thought maybe we were being limited by the amount of energy we could get into the machine, but no. It's definitely keeping up. Maybe it just needs more than one. I mean, 70% of the opera. That. It's not like it's going 70% faster, it's going 30% faster, but still, something that takes, say,. Seven seconds is notably faster than something that takes ten. I am creating an additional oak chest so I can make a double chest so I can empty all of this into here. And then let me tell you what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go back into my mine and I'm going to go find more tin so I can make more upgrades and so I can determine whether or not they are worth making. Tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to make some more bronze and make a bronze pickaxe because I think it has the same mining potential as iron, meaning it can break the same objects, but it has 30% more durability, which means that it's going to be perfect for this little expedition where I'm going to be running around breaking presumably a bunch of stone in the search for more tin. All right, we'll be right back as soon as I've done that. Okay, it was never going to be a particularly difficult quest, was it? It's tin. It's a fairly readily available resource. Handy thing right now is that I tend to find iron and tin close to one another, and I kind of need both, so that's useful. All right, we're back, and we've got a pretty good supply now of tin. Uh, it looks like we must have run out of fuel while I was away. We didn't get any coal while we were down there, but then again, to be fair, I wasn't necessarily looking for it either. Probably should have been. And back into the mines we go for coal. Back to the surface again. The bronze pickaxe is looking a little bit worse for wares, but we do now have 43 coal, which will hopefully uh, sustain us even for a bit longer. And we also have, well, not that much more tin and, and iron. I, I did find a, a penance more, but we're going to go ahead and use fragmented carbon for this because I wanted to. So we've got a lot more tin now. And we've got a bit of charcoal cooking up in there. We should have a pretty decent charge in the bat box. Feel pretty comfortable walking away from that for a moment. We're going to have to search around for where I dumped everything. Because I did empty out my inventory, which means that I don't know where anything that we need is currently located. So it looks like some of our rubber spots have already repopulated. Go ahead and collect those. We also have our new trees growing over here. Get ourselves some more copper cables because I can't find ours. And they're either right in front of me or we ended up using them all on the last thing that we built, which is possible. I wasn't paying enough attention to our consumption, but that's perfectly possible. We do have more rubber getting cooked up, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so I think we should have enough now to create six of these. There is the two refined iron that we need. We need to create another batch of cables this is eating into our magic time remember we were going to do magic this episode as well and now i've just become obsessed with this completely unnecessary bonus activity oh geez we, do <laughs> we need even more cables that's going to take up all of our time and all of our energy and then we might just have to do magic next episode but i want to make two of these we don't have enough cables again hold on we only need two more, so we can create uninsulated copper cables. And then not put cobblestone next to them, but rubber, like a sane person. There we go. And then we can create our second overclocker upgrade. So we now have, counting the one that is inside of the macerator, we have three of these. So, if we put the iron dust in here and we start watching it, there's no chance that we won't notice a difference here. Right? As soon as we drop this in. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, so it does make it faster. 
noticeably faster when you have three of them, and it actually looks like we're able to maintain electricity here. So the concern would be if you have too many overclocker upgrades, it might draw more power than can be supplied over copper cables from our bat box. At that point, we would want a series of transformers, a transformer inside of here, and a bigger energy storage device. But you want to be careful, because if you don't have a transformer in your machine to lower the voltage to something usable, it will blow up your machine. I'm not joking. I've had it happen. Speaking of the bat box, it's actually full now. That's useful. I was actually okay with the furnace's performance. I want to see the macerator pick up speed. Will it be noticeable? On oh, very much so. So what we need to do is make a lot more overclocker upgrades. That's what I'm learning from all this. Oh, I didn't realize we were getting the empty cells back every time we used them. That's helpful. I'm making one more of these, by the way, in case you weren't able to suss that out based on my behavior. If you were wondering why, it's because I'd like to have two in each machine. So two in the macerator and two in the electric furnace go so that's all the rubber I was able to collect let's finish off these cables they were starting to look a little bit silly we're in a race against the clock now to see if we can get this constructed before the sun sets I've heard the cries from folks at home saying why don't you just do it after you sleep because there's no adventure in that that's why each machine now has two overclocker upgrades and I wouldn't be surprised if that started to put a strain on how much power our generator no, okay, our generator is keeping up with it. That's great. Well, folks, as the sun rises, I will be the first to confess that I made a mistake. I didn't mean to do this. This just sort of happened, the overclocker upgrade situation. Not what I had planned, not what I had anticipated, which means that I guess we won't be doing the magic in this episode, but that's okay, because that just means that there's more to do next time. Uh, for example, we're going to need to find more diamonds, hopefully using a divining rod so we're probably going to make the first two tiers of that the third one does require a diamond and i don't know if i really want to waste one of the two diamonds that we have on that although it would be funny wouldn't it let's go ahead and add it just as a lark uh we should probably also make a shield if we're going to be going around and exploring in the underground next time in order to get those diamonds but these are definitely going to help then we need to make another portal so we can go get the glowstone necessary to build the philosopher's stone which is necessary to build the transmutation table and once we have the transmutation table well that's when things get really good but that's for next time until then thank you folks for watching god bless each and every single one of you and i'll see you later bye i'd be curious to find out with this copper ore in oh my gosh that's that's just nether diamond? What? Oh, gosh! Oh, no! Unprepared! Unprepared for this! Unprepared for this! Okay!